Well, one day I got grabbed and, and uh, one of the workers asked me, uh, I want to show you something. I'm going to answer your question, but I got to kind of build this up a little sure. bit. And he said, have you seen any of this? And this bunch of three ring binders that had just come in. And it was uh, infrared photographs of overflights at Rocky Flats. And it was, they were dated like August of 1989. Well, I remembered that Ed Goldberg, who was the acting area manager for Rocky Flats, who replaced Earl Whiteman uh, right before the search, um, had ordered up infrared. And it was uh, MSS photography. Uh, multi-spectral scanning, so it was color. And he's, the, the point of it was, is he said, look at this. We have above, ground, uh, above background levels of strontium and cesium. And I said, okay, first off, what's above background levels? Because there shouldn't be any. <laughs> he says, well, there has to be some because over the years we've had above ground testing throughout the world, and with the prevailing winds, just about everywhere has these chemicals. I said, okay, so wh why is this here? He says, well, then you have to understand that strontium-90 and cesium-137 together is indicia of a critical mass, and I knew exactly what he was talking about. That meant that there was a nuclear reaction out there at Rocky Flats, and because I looked it up, the half-life of both those elements is about 30 years. It had to be within a reasonable amount of time. Nasty carcinogens, both of them. And I don't remember if it was just isolated to the plant site itself or off-site, but um, the, fact of, the fact that I saw the photographs, I saw the charts, and it hadn't. And I went to um, a Department of Justice attorney and talked to him about it, as we did because we had a task force. And I was told that they weren't interested in anything like that. So that wasn't pursued. And again, that was a political reason because I believe that in December of 1989 there was a big confab in D.C. And I believe it was agreed that they were going to work out this Rocky Flats case to nothing. And what I didn't realize till later is that the government agreed that there was no physiological harm caused by the operations at Rocky Flats, which isn't true. And that fits why they don't want to know about the strontium and the cesium. So I've reviewed materials over the years about the cleanup, and I don't remember seeing this report mentioned. I've in particular looked up to see if strontium 90 and Cesium-137 were constituents that they were looking for to clean up. I don't remember them cleaning those, showing those as a cleanup. So I would say that DOE has either covered it up or they've altered other reports and they've buried this, re this particular data and it's never seen the light of day. And I'll look, them right, I'll, look, I'll look anybody in the government right in the face, eye to eye, and I'll tell them that. They're a liar. Because I saw it. I know it exists.